What up, what up, what up, what up, what up? What's going on? Who we got on here? What we got? Three people. Y'all know I need 25 in order to continue. Got an interesting subject today. Um, traveling. Colin, J. Slowpoke, what up? What I got? Colin, my man Big Manny, what up? My little brother Vic. He should be at the airport. Orlando Dugan. Are oh, you here? All right, well, hit me up, hit me up, hit me up. Are you, are you here watching? DJ Rec, what up with it, my man? Rec, VP, Houston, Chapter KO. Hey, man, tell my man I have not got my Beijing yet, neither, KO. <laughs> HD Row, Tim, I'm trying to catch up. Carlos, Dimitri, yo, what up, bro? I'll be in Philly next week, too. Can't wait to see you, folks, for real. Carlos, Matt Lacey, HD Row, Donald, Orlando. Okay, so, again, man, today's... Um, Today's live broadcast is being brought to you by RMJ Promotions, Gotham City Bike Fest, Saturday, September 17th in North Carolina, Fayetteville, town or anywhere. Make sure that you're in Fayetteville for on the 27th. And then for all of my folks across the way, I'll be in Prussia, PA. I hope I'm saying that right. <laughs> King of Prussia, PA. For Team Money Cycles, we got a cancer event. That's actually next Saturday. Not this Saturday coming up, but the Saturday after that, August the 27th, uh, put on by Team Money Cycle. So that's what I got going on. Okay, it's a lot going on. All right, today, um, just breathing through the news. I was on the road all day yesterday, uh, getting home from uh, Winston, Sa Winston Salem, North Carolina. Then we had some national business I had to order. But in the news today, man, y'all been watching. This weather, man, how it affects certain people, certain town. Right now, we got issues with uh, Louisiana. The weather got them under. The weather has their houses covered. Lavar, what up? Measy, what up? Dietrich, what up? Levita, Terry, what up? So, first thing we want to do, man, is we want to say a prayer, man, for everybody in Louisiana, man. Our, um, you know our. Our biker community, families, loved one, whatever. If you're in Louisiana, man, and in any kind of way you're affected by the storm, um, we definitely want to stop and say, hey, Tracy, what up? We definitely want to give a shout out to them, man. So a quick prayer, man. Stop what you're doing today. Say a prayer because that could be us. That could be you. It, it might be somebody you know or don't know directly. So we're going to say a prayer for Louisiana, man. We love you guys. And hope you guys can, uh, you know, stay safe and stay, uh, stay above the water and everything else y'all got going on. Okay? Louisiana, we love you. Now, um, let's say on a happier note, because <laughs> I'm, you know, on a happier note, today is my sister Ava Staples' birthday. If you know Ava, man, you know she's down with the Kings for real. Play no game. Um... Okay, you have family there, Orlando? Well, we pray that your family is accounted for, folks. For real, that ain't nothing to be playing with. Yes, Lord, that's my hometown, thanks. Um, what's up, Cell? Thanks for the useful information about the bike set. We're going to get into some real shit right now, too, so hold on. But I just want to give a shout-out for every and tell everybody to pray for Louisiana, man, for real. For real, they're going through some real crazy stuff right now. Um, now, on a happy note, Ava Staples, it's your birthday. That is my sister. I call her my sister. Um, um, she is an awesome individual. When it comes to support, she will support whatever it is you have on the bike set. She definitely is a down with down with the King's biggest supporter, number one fan. There's nobody bigger than Ava Staples, and I and I know we got a lot of supporters. No disrespect to Lady Chiquita and all the rest are down with the uh, down with the King um, supporters. All of you guys, we love y'all. But today is about Ava and it's about her birthday. So, um, there it is. There. If you know Ava, go on her page, man. Chuck, what up with it, Chuck? If you know Ava, make sure you go on her page and, and give her a happy birthday. Send her a happy birthday shout out. Um, you know, it is what it is. So, happy birthday, Ava. We love you. As always, you know I love you, sis. So, that's what that is. All right, now, 
I want to give a shout out to my my cousin. This is really my cousin. I mean, one of my biggest fans, biggest supporters. My man Roller Hodge, Gorilla Blue, Las Vegas um, Hog Life president. So shout out to him, um, his movement and everything he got going, his prayers. We just start supporting those and start supporting each other, man, when it comes to these prayers and different things like that. Um, because, again, my biggest thing is I tell you, you got to applaud somebody for at least attempting or giving a fuck to attempt to do something for you or to make your day. Charles, what up, man? Down the pound. So, that's that. Um, so, shout out to my man, Gorilla Blue Rolling Hodge, man. He was on this morning, and he gave a shout out about the subject. So, I hope I got some of his people on here watching this. Ronald, what up? All right. So, <laughs> today's subject is, what's the difference between riding your motorcycle and what's the difference between traveling on your motorcycle? Okay. A lot of people had some good comments um, when, I, when I dropped it this morning. And a lot of people, I think, kind of made it about miles. The difference between traveling and riding is not about miles. It has nothing to do with how many miles you rock. Um, look, you had a great time in Houston. Man, the Houston Kings are doing some amazing stuff, man. Trust me, they're doing some amazing stuff. Shout out to my man, my man Fifth Ward Wayne. Hey, man, love you guys. Trust me. Um, and hold them cats to it, Wayne. Hold them cats to it. So, um, thank you for that, LaBelle. I'm glad you had a good time. Felicia, what it do? So, the difference between riding your motorcycle and traveling on your motorcycle, and I got this from yesterday, man. Coming home, I was uh, riding back with Queen and just riding with different individuals. Okay. And I noticed that there is a difference. What a lot of you don't realize is this. The, the, the biggest difference, and I'm, and I'm going to try to break this down, so just kind of bear with me. I'm going to try not to get sidetracked. Y'all know I can go on four or five different uh, avenues. But the biggest difference between riding and traveling is this. When you ride your motorcycle, it's more of a carefree spirit. Meaning, um, you're on there, you're riding. I don't care if you're going 1,000 miles or you're going 100 miles or 10 miles. When you're riding, mentally, you're in a different space and time. Um, that's my mom coming in. My mom will come back in. You want to uh, take me in? Stop, you got you something to eat? No, because I had the smoke and I was cooking my little sausage. That's my mom. Say, hey, everybody, mom, you're on live right now. Hey, everybody. <laughs> You ain't got this with me anyway, huh? Well, I, take, you show, you I know. know. Yeah. All right, so that's my mom, everybody. Hey, Queenie Queen. So the biggest difference between riding a motorcycle and traveling, when you ride your motorcycle, you ride you ride more like with a carefree spirit, meaning that, you know, kind of sort of you already know where you're going and you're just going to get there and it is what it is. You're not even, you, you know, your vision is almost tunnel vision. On where you're going You don't even see the parameters Or you don't even see things around you You don't even really pay attention To north, south, east, and west Or none of that I'm going from my house To so-and-so house I'm going from Atlanta To California Or to Memphis Or whatever So you basically You know, you got it And you're gone And One thing about riding your motorcycle You don't do An extensive Maintenance check on your motorcycle Because you just I just rode it last Two days ago, it was fine then, it's going to be fine now. As opposed to when you're traveling, okay? A lot of these cats you see out here, when, when Smiley first started the, the, the Yonder, well, the, the, the 2448 thing, and when Yo, and when uh, Snowman and, and I, because I invented the word Yonder. I didn't invent the word Yonder, but I started it. Snowman made it popular. I'm saying it again for all y'all that don't know. <laughs> but anyway, um... It is, a, it is a word that comes from the history, from the history books, from the older cats, get yonder, from our, your grandmothers and grandfathers. But anyway, when we started this movement, it wasn't about riding your motorcycles. It was about traveling to see the world. We, we kind of we kinda just said ride your motorcycle because we figured if you rode your motorcycle... Then you would be you would you would do the necessary preparations to take the travel to make the journey. 
when you're going somewhere locally, when you get up and go to work, you do the regular preparation. Get your clothes ready maybe the night before. You get up that morning, get everything done, iron, put it on, and you're out the door. But now let's say you get ready to travel. Now you got to stop. You got to get your mind right. You know, okay, well, I'm going to be gone for this amount of days, this amount of time. I need to do this. I need to make sure I got this packed, da, 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 da. So it's, it's really a mindset difference. But and, and the reason why I'm bringing this to you today is because my wife, Queen, she can ride her ass off. She can ride like nobody else. Percy, what up with it? Kinky, what up with it? But she can't travel. Meaning that when you traveling... You have to pay attention to directions, north, south, east, and west. You have to pay attention to your surroundings. You can't just have everything focused on the navigation, and if the navigation say turn, you turn. You have to have some type of sense of direction and guidance and all that to know where you're going, you know, and to know, okay, basically what this is around you and the whole nine yards. And a lot of us are guilty of that. A lot of y'all, I travel. Even when I go from here to whatever, I'm traveling. You have to be able to... Um, we from the country been using the word all of our life, and I, and I agree. Trust me. Shout out. Um, it, it is a a back down south. My grandmother from down south country, so that's where yonder come from. None of that. I'm just saying one. We done took it and made it on the set popular. But let me stay on focus. What I'm saying is this: where any time I ride my motorcycle, I'm traveling. Whether I'm going ten miles, a hundred miles, or fifty miles. I do a regular maintenance check on our motorcycle. Remember the video I did where I told you, you got to spend time and make love to your motorcycle. Because at any given moment, or at, or at every given moment, you need to know where you are with your motorcycle. You need to know your tires, oil changes, tune-ups, the whole nine yards. The average motorcycle rider today just rides. That's all you're going to do is ride. So where are we going to? Where are we riding to? We're going here. But you ask anybody. Ask Keisha Dixon now. Ask handful of them. When you ride with me, I got to inspect your bike. But on any big trip two months prior to riding with me, you got to call me. I'm calling you. Hey, did you do this? Hey, did you do that? Hey, did you do this? Hey, did you do that? Make sure you do this. Make sure you do that. Traveling on your motorcycle is a mental preparation. It's a mental uh, thing that you have to do. It takes time. It takes energy. To travel on your motorcycle because now it's just not about riding, it's all the other elements that you got involved. For example, if I'm riding to a local bike now, I'm just riding. I don't really care about the traffic, what's going on. Of course, I'm watching the traffic, of course, I'm making sure that this don't happen, that don't happen. But I'm only going down the street and coming back. But when you're traveling, the traffic and everything else becomes more important because nigga, I'm all the way out here, I got I'm going here, and I gotta get back. You feel what I'm saying? So, I can't afford to not pay attention. What up? What up with the juice? What up, sis? My sis, um, Janessa. And juice gonna agree with this. When you're traveling, everything is important. Every car in front of you, every truck, where you are. We don't depend on no GPS. You gotta, you gotta know how to reach your atlas. Um, you know, all these different things. You gotta map out this, and you gotta remember, okay, on, when we did the atlas, Okay, we said we were going to go here, and then we're looking for Interstate 26, and then we take it 26 East. And remember when we get on 26, it's a bridge, whatever it is. So it's, it's a whole lot more to just tra to traveling on a motorcycle than just riding. When you're riding a motorcycle, you don't give a damn about no bridges. You don't care about, all you care about is going from here to there. You know, I'm going from here. I've been there before, so I'm going. But when you're traveling, you feel what I'm saying? It's so much preparation mentally, even before you leave. To get on, even before you even get on your motorcycle. It's preparation after preparation after preparation. It's, it's question after question after question. You feel what I'm saying? So, that's one of the biggest differences between riding your motorcycle and traveling. Also, when you travel, me and Juice, people ask us, so, how do you know when to get gas? Because I'm traveling. Juice, I need you on this one because you travel. You, 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 you travel. Because I travel. When you're traveling... Guess what? Every sign on the freeway means something. Every sign on both sides of the freeway means something. I think, um, Big Manny, if you're still on here, I taught Manny something the last time we rode together when we traveled. Okay? I, and, I, and I and I called him on the phone, and I was just, hey, Manny, watch this sign. Watch this, watch that, watch this, watch that. I don't know if he's still on here. If he is, he probably will agree. 
But when you're traveling on your motorcycle, every sign on the freeway, the blue signs, the green signs, you know what I'm saying, the mile marker signs, the blue mile marker signs, the green mile marker signs, the white signs, the, of course all your yellow signs and your orange signs, you're supposed to know what that is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But all those signs mean something. So you got to, when you're traveling, and this is what I tell everybody. Man, I'm so damn busy. I ain't got no music on. I'm not sitting around here head bopping. You'll see me every once in a while. Once I, once I got locked in, if I, if I got, I know I got 100 miles to go straight forward or whatever on this particular road, then I can get relaxed a little bit. But for the most part, I'm watching every sign. I'm reading, trying to read every sign. Bam, bam, bam. Because all of that shit means something when you're traveling. Trust me, it do. And if you want to wonder, if you if you wonder why Cell ain't never run out of gas, it ain't because I got an eight gallon gas tank. Because I'm reading them damn signs because I'm traveling. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Eric, what up with it? Rose, what up with it? It's because I'm traveling. You feel what I'm saying? I'm not just riding. Traveling is a mind state. Riding, you don't need no mind to ride. You're just gonna ride. You're just going wherever you're going. Chuck Rain agreed. Talk to my bro about this all the time, all the way down to fairing bolts, oils, kickstands, springs, torque specs, shifter links, tank size, etc. Trust me, when you're traveling, all of that shit means something. All of it. And people always ask me, say, why are you so prejudiced about riding? You won't ride with nothing but baggers or nothing but, you know, Harley Davidson. The biggest reason is this, and I'm going to tell you all this. And anybody that I, that's heard me say, I won't ride with nothing but Harley Davidson. When I say this, they're going to agree. Because if you don't have Harley Davidson, then you just mad on some other shit because you ain't got Harley Davidson. And you just feel like we're being prejudiced, but we're not. The reason why I say I won't ride with nothing but HD or Harley Davidson, because they got the same bike I got. Which most likely means they're going to have the same tank size, like the same tank I got. That means they got the same kind of problems I got as far as they know what it is, that, you know, what it takes to, to, to make sure your bike is you know, on point the whole nine yards. You feel what I'm saying? If you got a person that has a other bike, and you got a, a person with a Harley Davidson. That's two different kind of bikes. It's two different kind of maintenance. That's two different kind of preparations. That's two different kind of gas stops. And if I'm traveling and I'm trying to go from here to here and I don't put in my traveling process and my plans, then I got my gas stops based on my travel, based on my motorcycle. You got to, they left, you know what's ahead. Next service, 106 miles. That's what I'm trying to tell you. When you're traveling, you got to read the signs. Or your ass going to be stranded. I'm telling you some real shit. When you're riding your motorcycle, you don't give a damn about signs. You know, I'm, just, I'm going from here to here. I know I got enough gas. I'm going from here to here. That's why we don't run out of, we don't run out of gas when we're traveling. That's amateur shit. That's riding your motorcycle shit. If you run out of gas, that's because you're riding your motorcycle. You should have been traveling. Orlando, keep teaching, bro. You taught me a lot in the past couple of months that I am instilling with my chapter in the organization. Appreciate you. But that's the difference between traveling on your motorcycle and riding on your motorcycle. You care about every sign that's on the freeway. Every sign. Understand this, folks. These white folks. What up, Blue? I gave you a shout out, man. Love you, bro. Appreciate it. This, we're answering the question about the difference. Okay. Um, these white folks ain't wrote, built, Installed, cemented, poles up, and all that. Nothing, and spent nine dollars that they didn't have to spend. Every sign on that freeway is important when you're traveling. You better hear me. I got a few left, Eric. You better go to the website www.therealfho.com. I just mailed out um, ten or twelve of them orders right now. So every sign on that freeway. Understand this. And when I say white folks, to my white folks that's watching, you ain't white, but to the white folks. When I say the white folks, the man, the city, the states, the governments, whoever. <laughs> um, um, they have not spent no money and put nine extra dollar into nothing that don't mean nothing. Trust me. If they took the time to create that sign and put it on the freeway, Homie, that sign means something. Crystal says, same size tank, motor work versus stock. We were pretty much burn equal amount of gas when traveling on the highway. Um, well, if, if you got a big motorbike, it, it'll be a little different. What up, Sunshine? My sister Sunshine. Another 
traveler. Sunshine does not ride motorcycles. She travels on motorcycles. So I need you to chime in on this one too, Sunshine. Um, last exit before told different shit, all kind of shit. Okay, they all mean something. RB, what it do? You should download one exit. It lets you know what er what at every exit will definitely help you plan your trip. Listen, you can do all that shit if you want to, though, Kinky. You gotta know how to read. I don't. I don't have no no. I don't have no app to tell me to get off here and get gas. I don't even have my navigation to tell me that. You feel what I'm saying? I have the free because you gotta understand this. Before all of this electronic shit, before all these phones and all that, people was traveling. I was a little kid. My dad, we, we traveled back and forth from California, Mississippi. They didn't have no phones. They didn't have no GPSs. They didn't have no, uh, none of that telling them when to get off and get gas. They had them signs on the freeway. You feel what I'm saying? Thank you, Carla. What up with it? What up, Big Cell? What can we do to get TLTs in Oklahoma? We got rare breed, second to none. We need some kings. Hey, make it happen. Shit, hit me up. Give me five motherfuckers and we'll make it happen. I was just in the West Texas with no with no signal for 60 miles. And that's what I'm saying. When you're traveling, you cannot depend on electronics because when you're traveling, sometimes you end up in the middle of nowhere. When I say nowhere, I mean absolutely nowhere. For real. In the middle of where in the fuck am I? That's where you end up at. So... Queen, quit telling people good morning. Listen, because this is about your ass not knowing how to travel. That's what I'm saying. You ain't even listening. You trying to distract everybody else with all the good mornings. Be quiet, Queen, and listen, because you need to know how to travel. Now, you can ride your motorcycle. You can ride get that. You rode your ass off this weekend. But how many times did you miss the exit? How many times did you go too far? Or how many times did we have to get off and get back on the freeway? That's because you ain't traveling. You need to watch the signs to use your best judgment. You know how many miles your bike can go before you run out, especially if you got go up on the motorcycle. What up, Patrick? That's from ASAP. Johnny Smith, I agree with watching the signs when traveling. I've been driving trucks 13 years, all 48, so it's imperative to know what's ahead of you, for sure. Uh, what up, uh, Kenneth? Love you too, cuzzo. So, what we have to start doing, gentlemen and ladies, is buy you an atlas. And read the front of the atlas. Do you know the atlas tells you what two in front of any major highway stands for? You got either if it's an odd or an even number, you got to know what that means. If it's a, um, if it's a, like you got two eighty five, okay. Inside the circle, inside the city, one eighty five outside of the city. Oh, they got all you got all this. I ain't gonna tell you. It's in the atlas. I know. I know how to travel. I know how to get on my motorcycle and go anywhere. And not be worried about running out of gas or, you know what I'm saying, now all that. So, traveling takes preparation. Traveling takes knowledge of. And traveling is a mental thing. When you're traveling, you're mentally exhausted. You have to have that extra energy mentally. It ain't just about holding the bike up and riding and looking straight. I Man, you got to catch stuff on the other side of the freeway. I talked... Um, um, State roads versus interstates, the whole nine yards. My man, Julius, I love you, Julius. Thank you, Juice. I appreciate you. Um, I taught Queen something today. We were coming coming down 20, and the lights on the other side were flashing. The guy was hitting his headlights on and off, on and off, on and off. That's some simple shit. But Queen thought the nigga was crazy. No, what he was telling you was, it was the police up ahead. On your side of the freeway, aiming to get your ass. <laughs> Odd is north and south is even, even and even, even is east and west. Now numbers going up, numbers going down. You gotta know what that means. If you hit the state and the numbers are going down, if you hit the state and the numbers going up, you gotta know how many miles is in each state. How do you tell that? How do you tell how many miles it's gonna take us to get from this side of this state to this side of the state? All of these different things come from reading signs. Toes are marked on the on the atlas as well. Tell them dirty. Another dirty. Another. Traveler, another motorcycle traveler. He don't just ride motorcycles. He travels. Kinky Queen don't. She don't just ride motorcycle. She travels. You feel what I'm saying? The signs is very important. I've been driving truck for 20 years. Tell him, Dave. You feel what I'm saying? So, the next level of getting yonder, ladies and gentlemen, 
is about being able to travel, being able to get out there, not depending on no phone, not depending on no GPS, but getting your ass an atlas, sitting down, taking the time to prepare your trip um, as to where you're going, sitting down, taking the time to prepare your motorcycle, to know if it's ready or how it, don't, see this is the thing about it, and when you're riding, oh man, the tire, it, it, the tire, cool, I can go down the street, I ain't worried about it, but when you're traveling, you got to really sit down and say, damn, do I need to go and change that tire now? And, and I'm pretty sure Dirty and Juice, we done had this conversation. Hey, Juice, what you think I should change my tire now? Wait till we get there. And Juice going to tell you, man, go and change that motherfucker now. I'm going to tell you, go and change it now. Yeah, but I got about another 2,000 miles on it where the trip is 3,000. So why would we even take the chance on your 2,000 being 200? Go on and change it now. See, that's the thing about when you're traveling, it's the preparation that costs. It's not the trip. Read the legend on in your atlas. What, what Dirty is saying. Just got back from Nashville yesterday. When you're going through the mountains, you truly need to be prepared at all times. So, when you're traveling, watching for them deer and moose crossing, all that. Sometimes, you, if you've been traveling, you know they got bear signs. Watch for bear. And they're like, what the hell, a bear? What the fuck them? They got all kinds of moose, bear, deer. Elk, all kind of signs when you're traveling. Now, when you're traveling on your motorcycle, you know this kind of stuff. You feel what I'm saying? But it, it's, it's really all about, it's the, it's the pre-prep. It, I think that's the most expensive. I don't know if Julie, uh, Jude, uh, Juice and Sunshine, Sunshine, if you're on here, see if you agree. The pre-prep for any travel is most expensive. The trip itself is not that expensive. It's the pre, it's the pre, the pre-trip that's most expensive. Hold on one second, let me get this from my mom. Uh, Yeah, it's the pre, uh, it's the pre-trip that's most expensive. So, it's all about the pre-trip. If you, the pre-trip is what it costs, because that's what you're going to determine if you need tires, oil changes, you know, whatever else you need. Also, you have to, when you do the pre-trip, Earl J, what do it do? What up, sir? Traveling is definitely a journey and not a race. And it's... Again, take the mileage. I don't care if you're traveling 200 miles or 2,000 miles or, or 20,000 miles. You have to prepare to travel. Speaking on entire life, if you could touch on the importance of the weather, the heat will run through a tire. If you're traveling, if, you, if you're traveling, if, if it's 110 degrees, what do you think that rubber is doing as it constantly touch that ground? What do, you, what do you think that rubber is doing? That's the difference. Now, this is the thing. When you're traveling, the only thing that messes up a travel trip is being inconvenienced. Being not prepared. You feel what I'm saying? Being inconvenienced and not prepared. And I'm going to tell you this. And I'm almost willing to bet this. What did you say, Glennon? My little cousin just purchased his first home at 23 in Louisiana on my way to Western Union as we speak. Every little bit of support accounts. Again, I spoke with that earlier, man. We got to say a prayer for Louisiana, man. They're going through it. If you got anybody there, send, please send him, Miss Barry. Please send him my deepest condolences. I mean, my regards and my prayer. Let him know we're praying for him in the motorcycle community. Smitty said, hell yeah, that pre-check costs. But brothers do it before then out in the middle of nowhere. Because I'm telling you, out in the middle of nowhere, going to bust your ass. That same tire you could have got at home installed for 280 Get your ass caught out there in the room with that tire going to be 500 and he going to look at you like, hey, well, what are you going to do? Because you, you stranded and you fucked up, so you got to get it together. Kinky said, most definitely pay attention to the signs when you are getting off the exit. It tells you the way to the gas station and how far. All of that matters. Be respectful of holding on, holding up others you're riding with if you're not prepared to check your shit first. Understand this. If you're going on a trip with me, if we're going to take a trip, if we traveling with me, I done talked to you a month before, two months before. I know when you got your oil changed, your bike checked out from an official Harley Davidson dealership or an official Harley Davidson mechanic. We ain't talking about your homeboy, your boot thing, or your boyfriend, you know what I'm saying, checking out your bike, talking about it's good, babe. He's just trying to get you away from the house 
anyway because he got some other shit he got going on. So he going to tell you it's good and to get on the road and do whatever because he's trying to get you away from the house. And or little mama. Same thing with some of you niggas that think y'all got it good. Little mama going to tell you, yeah, baby, you straight. I'm going to send you some money and everything because she just wants you from the house so he can come over. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm getting back to the get back. <laughs> I'm going to get back. Good morning. I'm not a traveler. My body and mind can't handle it. It's not for everybody. Ride safe, not hard. Thank you. Right. Remind them what you say, sunshine. Remind them about the mountains up north. Ain't nothing like riding across uh, I-10. Two di totally different rides. What you're telling them is important. Smile. Thank you, sunshine. I appreciate you. Uh, <laughs> so, I'm telling you right now. If you got your if you got your boot thing or whatever, checking out your bike, that ain't take it to a dealership. If you're gonna be traveling. If you finna get somewhere, you finna be traveling, have your bike inspected by a certified mechanic. Like I said, your boot thing, he's just trying to get you out the house so he can go and do what he want to do. Uh, and if uh, if, it's your, if it's your wife telling you, hey, babe, you know you ain't rode your motorcycle, you know you don't ride, you, I'm finna go out and get the 48 states like some of you cats been doing. I'm finna go get, <laughs> look at, look at, look at, look at, look at, look, 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 hey, Dirty, you're wrong, Dirty, you're wrong. Um, I'm gonna go get the 48 states, and you know damn well you ain't rode 48 minutes nowhere. You know what I'm talking about? Man, go take your bike to the shop, spend that bread, whatever they cost to uh, get the little bike checked out, man, and get it certified. Because like I said, if you ride with me, you're not gonna ride with me, and I don't know you, and I haven't had a chance to check out your bike or make sure that it's been checked out, okay, by a certified mechanic. I'm just telling you some real shit. So, that's very, 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 very important. Um... So, riding your motorcycle, you ain't got to check oil. You ain't got to check shit. Gas it and then go. That's what riding your motorcycle is. Putting gas in and then go. But when you travel on your motorcycle, the pre-trip, the, you know, knowing your limits, knowing your boundaries, some of the dealerships not right. Is it fair to call out dealerships and, and on these wannabe technicians or mechanics? Understand this though. This is what I want you to understand. This about a Harley Davidson certified mechanic. It's just somebody that went to school and read a book and did what the books say do. So it's very rare. You it, once once you find you a good mechanic, you stick with that mechanic. You know what I'm saying? Like old school. You know we had so and so. Like my dad is a hell of a mechanic. You feel what I'm saying? But mechanics back in the day understood the workings of an engine and understood all of these mechanics now they the, the books say the books say this to screw to a uh, drain and then I, I, I unscrew this and I do that and that oh yeah yeah I can change the oil but a mechanic back in the day he knew way more about than just fixing it but he understood the engine he cared to know about the engine and all that they ain't got that no more yeah then so like you saying I the true mechanics are becoming rare so you know if you find you one that's why people like my man, shout out to T-Man Performance, TR Riser, that's why they get paid the big bucks when it comes to working on these bikes because they are true mechanics. They are true engineers. They are true, they got an understanding of the working, in, the working interactions of what it is you're trying to do. Shout out to my man Greg Dole, GMS Racing. He has the fastest bagger in the world, built it right there in his shop. Can't deny him. So these are true mechanics. But... So, those are the different things when it comes to riding your motorcycle. When you ride it, you put gas in it, and you go. When you travel, it's all about the preparation. Computerized engines change the game, though. Okay, it is what it is. What up, Papa? Okay, so that, those are the differences between it all. When you're traveling... You got to read the signs. It's a mental game. You get mentally frustrated. You know what I'm saying? You get, because you got to read all of the signs. You got to know what's the difference between the green signs and all that. So I hope I've given you guys the definition of it. If you're going to get out there and get yonder, if you're going to travel, know how to travel on your motorcycle. Don't just know how to ride your motorcycle. If you're going to ride, ride, you know, do what you do. But if you're going to get out there and get yonder 2448 or just get yonder, period, learn how to be a traveler. Learn how to be efficient at being at traveling and getting yonder you feel what i'm saying those things are very 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 important um you, you feel what i'm saying when it comes hey man i made you some me and you both i was looking for something else to go with it man i was looking for something else to go with it man 
<laughs> to my dad, man. Love him to death. So those are the difference between traveling and riding a motorcycle. And those are very important. And I hope that I was able to teach you something. Now, on to my next subject. Uh, Houston, make sure I miss. Okay, I got blue. I got team money. Again, today's live broadcast is being brought to you by RMJ Promotion. Saturday, September the 17th, Gotham City Bike Fest. And also this month, Saturday, August 27th, August the 27th, Team Money Cycles and King Crusher PA. I will be there August the 27th. And then Saturday, September the 17th, I'll be in Fayetteville, North Carolina. So those are today's sponsors. Don't forget to shout out Ava's birthday. Don't forget to say a prayer for Louisiana. Now here we go. This is a this subject. Um, this subject might be real kind of controversial. Yesterday I had the opportunity of um, going down to Augusta to um, help bring on a, um, a chapter, one of our chapters. Okay. One of the things that we did at the council meeting, or one of the things that when we went to the council meeting, one of the things was was that was asked of us as kings was. Or that was said of us was that, well, you guys don't support, or the, the 78 Nation don't support us. And, and I'm going to say this. When you guys put together these councils with all these presidents and all these clubs and stuff, what you guys are doing is an awesome thing. Because we need, we need some type of structure. We need some type of guidance. Okay. But one of the things, too, you got to be careful of is not to get caught up in the hype or not to get caught up in, in the, in the bullcrap of um, of everything Red, hey, uh, Dirty said man you're making too much noise And you don't make that much noise on the domino table I don't play, I don't play dirty no You play dirty and domino No I don't play dirty D No no not dirty D uh, 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 Dirt, DJ Dirty original, uh, You know you know him but his, dirty, his name is Dirty too he said Okay you, well if his dad is dirty He played me he had an ass whoop He had an ass whoop He got his ass whooped that people ate me Is that what it was? That's what it was like, you, He just he just a hater because he didn't have his ass whooped Oh he hated because he had his ass whooped Are you hear him Dirty? <laughs> <laughs> Alright so uh, <laughs> Anyway When it comes to these councils and stuff man And you got people coming there And you know you got national clubs trying to come in and stuff you guys have to be careful. Well, we have to be careful. And I say you guys, we have to be careful. Yes, the set does need some regulating, and yes, the uh, and yes, um, you know, people are put in place and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But you, you you have to remember this: all of the rules and regulations that you guys are now wanting the new clubs that come in under your regime to follow. Ask yourself this. If you had to follow those same rules and regulations, would you be a part of that council? Would you be a part of that motorcycle club in that community? Would your club be in existence? If you had to go through all these rules and regulations that you're asking all the other uh, new clubs and new chapters to come in and be a funder. So, as black people, we have a tendency to, once we get it, we don't want nobody else to have it. So I'm going to make it as hard or not harder or make it Unreasonable for anybody else to have it. We got to be careful of that. We really do because I'm telling you, it's so easy to get caught up in the hype. It's so easy to get caught up in, in, you know. Well, I just want to make sure that they that they're gonna be a part of the set that they love the set. Are you a part of the set? Do you love the set? Do you do community service? Do you ride your motorcycle? Pedro, what up? You feel what I'm saying? All these things you guys are asking everybody else to do and be a part of, make sure you're a part of it and doing the same thing. You feel what I'm saying? So, I'm going to probably end on that because this subject can get way out of hand. It can get way touchy. I'm probably already overstepping my bounds. But I just had to say that because I want you guys to know this. If you're in charge, if you're in charge, remember what it was to be like when you wasn't in charge. You feel what I'm saying? Remember what it was to be like when, when you were that person trying to become a part of um, whatever it is you were trying to become a part of. You feel what I'm saying? The answer is yes, because here in Augusta, they have been following these rules for the past nine years. It has been in existence. Well, there it is there. But to answer this question, 
about the Kings don't support or about any club that don't support. If you go to an anniversary and that anniversary got three, four, five thousand people in there, in the anniversary, oh, that club doesn't support it. That club that got three, four, five thousand, six thousand Kings, Breed, Breed had 50,000, Kings had 30,000, and, so, and so whatever, whatever. I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't even mean to do that. No, I'm just saying. But if you go into an anniversary and that anniversary is packed and they got, that, not, we ain't talking about no two, three hundred, like some of you little small, you small clubs and you local clubs. You feel what I'm saying? You're not, you're not overstepping your bounds. You're on point. No, Wayne, but a lot of people take what, what sales say. They take that shit and they ball it up and they put it in their they deepest of feelings and they grow that shit into whatever it is. Uh, 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 next level. If you're not doing three, four, five thousand dollars, three, four, five thousand people at your party numbers, then you ain't supporting. Your club ain't supporting nobody. You understand what I'm saying? So when you say the Kings don't support, when you say next level don't support, breed don't support, they arrogant, they cocky, they this, they that. When you say second and none don't support. Man, you got to knock it off, man. Blue, we already answered the riding and traveling question. You just not getting on, so you're going to have to rewind it when it ends so that you can get it. But we've already answered that. Hey, will somebody tell Blue the difference between riding and, and, uh, and traveling? Anyway, and there's no disrespect to smaller clubs. It's not. It's not no disrespect to smaller clubs, but you don't ask the organization who, when they have an anniversary, got 5,000 people at the anniversary. Do they support? Are you crazy? You want to go on hold for a minute? I got to get this ice in there and put. Go on, do what you're doing. That if they, I mean, you're my dad. If, they, if, it, if you're making too much noise, tell them to kill themselves. That's what we're going to tell them, probably. Anyway. So, that's what you have to think about. When you ask... What can we do for y'all? What have you done for us? Everybody on the set is always take, 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 take. You feel what I'm saying? Only people know about them are the locals. Like I told you before, huh? please. Can't please everybody for those you can't please. Hey, it is what it is. Everybody on the set has just been take, 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 take. take. And also, again, all these old 20, 25, and 30 dollar anniversaries, I'm just not going to be able to do it. You feel what I'm saying? Uh, and you ain't giving me nothing but a DJ and an empty dance floor, and you want $20 to get in, $25 to get in, then you're going to give me a picnic with a hot dog and a hamburger. Boy, stop. Every club has started small. Every club must understand the essence of supporting others' clubs, other clubs until, when is until, until you need, until you never stop supporting, Okay. My president, uh, I mean, my man, Jay Mills, one of my sergeant arm just came on. Um, he can speak on it. So when you ask, or when, a, when an organization comes to your committee and asks to be a part of your committee, and you give whatever excuse you give, just remember, at one point in time, you were that same person. If the committee was even formed. A lot of y'all got on the committees before the committee was formed. And you just happened to, you know, be a part of the committee. But now you want to put all the holes, regulations, locks, and bars on all the new car, on all the new clubs coming in. You feel what I'm saying? We need to get back to the brotherhood where we embrace everybody. Yeah, I know we got a thousand people doing a thousand, you know, you got all these pop-up clubs. You got all this other stuff going on. We know that. We, we already understand how they go. You feel what I'm saying? But guess what? Just like everything else. They're going to come in, and they're going to go out. Because if this MC stuff is not in your heart, then you won't last. You're not going to last. It's just that simple. If it's not in your heart, and if it's not in your soul, you're not going to last. You can't fake riding. And another thing, quit telling me you ride motorcycles. Oh, man, I ride, I ride, I ride, I ride. No, you don't. No, you don't. Because if you did, if you did, you would know. What you need to know. And your club would be known the way it needs to be known. On some real stuff. So, again, black folks, just remember, what you ask for, you got to be able to give. What you're giving, 
is what you ask for. What you want is what you need to be make sure that that's what it is. Because I'm telling you right now, we have to be careful of being judges over anybody else. I don't want to judge nobody. If you come to me, shout out to Goodfellas Oakland. They keep it MC all weekend for food and the meet and greet and the picnic full full meals too. The turnaround and blessed. Um, on some real shit. You gotta call me on the house phone. You're interrupting my feed, Blue. If you're gonna call me, Blue, call me on the house phone. You're interrupting my feed. All these new organizations making the decision for those organizations that truly support and get out and really ride outside my city limits. It makes all the difference in the world. That's my Sergeant at Arms, National Sergeant at Arms, Jay Mills speaking. And, I, and like I said, if you got numbers, three, four, five, six, seven thousand people at your anniversary, your organization cannot be questioned about if they support. It's obvious they support. Hold on, y'all. Blue is trying to call in, and he's messing up my feed, so I'm sending him. He just canceled my YouTube feed. Uh, resume. Okay. I'm back. Okay. And, and like I said, a lot of you guys, just remember what you're asking. And remember who you're talking to. Remember who you're acting it up. I don't got no problem with following nobody rules. But just remember, the same rules you want me to follow, please make sure that you had to do them as well. Go ahead, Blue. Hey, you know, you, you won't get enough back to play with me, nigga, because you're on Facebook Live. Say, man, you interrupted my feed, man. You know the call to how. Fuck that feed and shit. But, nigga, I asked you what was your answer. I was one of the ones who helped you share the shit. And every <laughs> time your fuck ass get a little few dollars in your pocket or you get a couple more viewers, you treat a nigga funny, man. You got to stop that shit, Phil. First off, I gave you all the props. I've already no, asked. No I've already I answered that question. I've already answered that question, Blue. You have to rewind the video. Okay. The difference between riding and traveling is when you ride, you don't have to have any real preparation. You just get on your motorcycle and ride. All you need is gas money. Exactly. When you're traveling, you have to have preparation before. You have to uh, you have to have a destination set in mind. You got to be able to read all your street signs, all your highway signs. You got to know what this means, what that means, and you got to have some sense of direction. Okay, so why you couldn't just say that at first? Because now you're interrupting my train of thought on the other stuff that I was that I was trying to teach on real quick. Now I got to get I back. Mean, you know what? You 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 act like you Jimmy Jones or Doctor Ruth or some fucking body. You got to remember, nigga, you big sales. King Eminem. Nigga, you ain't Dr. Phil. Yes, sir. I apologize. Anyway, sir. go on back to your show, man, because you're going to make me ride out there to fuck you up, and that's going to be uh, 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 a travel right there. Because I'm going to have plenty of money to ride with you and fuck you up. Oh, you go, you go tra- <laughs> you go, you going to make that a travel trip, man. <laughs> hey, man, get off my phone. I love you, cuz. Oh, man, I'm gone, man. But, Oh my goodness, man. You see what I got to deal with? You see what I got to deal with? But anyway, where was I? Okay. Speaking on uh, being in charge, man, I had this thing laid out. I wasn't going to get distracted, man. I love you. I love you, Cuzzo. That's all I can say. Please be remindful of being in charge. You guys that are put in charge of organizations, you guys that are put in charge of... Uh, J. Mills said, it's disheartening to show up at a function and we are there looking at each other. Support is re- reciprocated. Okay. Um, if you're going to be in charge, just understand that it is, uh, I can't say it is what it is, but just understand that with great, I forgot how the saying goes, with that kind of stuff on your shoulder come great responsibility. And another thing, if you want somebody, because we also I'm I'm gonna jump on Houston ads right now too. Houston, no doubt, been on the King's bumper, been supporting. I mean, all of the the the, the clubs they've been doing their thing. Houston, 
y'all been great. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the support. But um, just like anybody else, if y'all ain't having shit for us to be there, guess what? We not going to be there. Dirty said, why do club anniversaries fall off? Because they're not riding their motorcycle. Because they're doing bike nights. <laughs> Instead of getting yonder. Is that good enough for you, Dirty? To whom much is given, much is expected. Thank you, Daryl. That's what I was trying to say. If you, if you start off huge, then what the fuck? Like I said, how can riders call themselves riders if they hold club, pull up in cars? We ain't going to even get into that. We, Please, who is this? Uh, SB, Time Bond, get, get off my thread, baby, with the bull crap. But you try to take me on a whole nother. <laughs> yeah, you have to be creative. Please say that again, Omar Wilson. Say what, man? They ride off the name. And I ain't even got no problem with that. If the, if the, if the organization has built the name, you feel what I'm saying? And you become a chapter, and because of that name, you eat off of that name. That's what it was all designed for. That, that's what the whole entire thing was designed for. That's what your national, that's all part of your national organization. If, if Kings, Florida, eat off of Kings of the South, but they're the Florida chapter or the Jayville chapter, then that's what they're supposed to do. That's the whole purpose of your brand. That's the whole purpose of your name. You feel what I'm saying? I ain't got no problem with any chapter eating off of the kings because they're all kings and we all as one anyway. So my man Tom, oh Tom Bond from Bree Vegas with the with the funnies, man. You check this out, man. You already know you ain't supposed to be going on no motorcycle or bending no cars. Prime example, the King's anniversary is successful because the Kings traveled abroad to build and to build and bond and that love is shown and brought back. Ninety percent of our support comes from abroad, proven. The Kings, coming to the King's anniversary, every state in the world is in the King's anniversary. Anyway, so, when you have the power to say yes or no, please don't abuse it. Please just don't say no because you can. Please understand that everybody Ain't gonna come to your event, especially when your event ain't shit to come to. Some of us, now this, I, this right here, my man right here, Bruce, what up, man? Tick, what up? Love you, homie. Some of us are black bikers. The rest of the dudes are hot boys with motorcycles. The shit like water and oil, it just don't mix. Bree, what is more important, bike night to support your city or anniversaries to support the whole MC world? Niggas mad dog you is watching. Paul, hey, my OG Paul Evans is watching. Uh, as for clubs getting support, man, some clubs show love to when you get there. Niggas look you up some, so your head up. That's and that's all. Run folks off or something. I don't know what he. Some, I think what he's trying to say. But so he said, what is more important to support your city or anniversaries to support the MC world? Uh, now I'm gonna say this. Now this might get me in trouble. And <clears throat> how can I say this? We all know we got people in our club that ain't never going nowhere on no motorcycle. <laughs> Let them do the local bike night shit. Disagree with that? You eating off my blood, sweat, and tears on these highways? Get off your ass with your members. And continue to build your nation's legacy. What do you mean, Chuck? Just ride your bike and something wonderful will happen. <laughs> That's what Lindog say. Build your organization. Get chapters based as hard to support with 10 members. Take a lesson from the bigger clubs that have members to go out and support. It's not hard because some of our chapters, LeVette, only have 8 to 10 members. But they still have to. See, this, this is what I'm saying. Uh, get you, Chuck. Nick, what up with it? Niggas mad dog you and look you upside your head. Eh? I ain't worried about that. Fort Wayne, come on with it. Hindu. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Man, you got to stay focused. I'm trying to, Omar. But anyway, okay. What I'm saying is this. For the local stuff, you got cats that do local stuff. They do way more local stuff than they do long distance stuff. Every club has exceptional members. Every club has yonder members. Every club got the members that that's not going to ride it.